last year at the uh, ESMO meeting, we were honored that the Meteor trial, which was a second line cabozentinib uh, study, was actually accepted uh, for presidential and published concomitantly at the New England Journal of Medicine, showing that cabozentinib uh, did provide a, an improved progression-free survival and response rate over Everolimus in the second line setting. So post VEGF TKI, such as sunitinib, pazapinib, and other. And later on, we reported uh, at ASCO that also that drug, cabozentinib, in second line or later, is associated with an overall survival benefit. We did not have overall survival benefit mature at that time, uh, last ESMO. And another study that was ongoing, but you know, results were not available was a smaller study called Cabosan, uh, Cabozentinib versus Sunitinib, so Cabosan. This was a different study. Exelexis provided the drug, but this was a study sponsored by the National Cancer Institute, you know, and the Alliance for Clinical Trial. And it was a smaller study. It was a 150 patient study, a randomized phase two, powered for progression-free survival uniquely. And it was in patients that we did not have any systemic treatment, so different than Meteor. It also focused on this population, the 70 to 80 percent of folks that present with intermediate or poor uh, metastatic RCC defined by clinical prognostic factor. And, and we decided to include this population because this population, in my opinion, does present a much more important unmet need. Those are patients that do have events earlier. Those are patients that usually you do not defer treatment, while the survival in this 20 to 30 percent good risk metastatic RCC, you know, could be much more prolonged, and some of them may not need immediate therapy. So we focused on that population uh, using progression-free survival at the primary endpoint enrolled actually a bit more than the 150 patients, 157 patients, and we saw a progression-free survival benefit that we think is clinically relevant and is actually statistically significant. It resulted in 31% decrease in the risk of progression of death. Secondary endpoint response rate mature also was higher and more significant, 46% CABO, 18% sunitinib. And we had a very early uh, look at the overall survival, which was not significant, I would say, yet, but trending in the right direction. The median follow-up actually is short in that. Uh, the side effects were similar uh, in both uh, arms, and the rate of treatment discontinuation due to adverse event actually was the same in both arms. So uh, could cabozentinib now, for the first time, showing increased efficacy over sunitinib, which was a standard uh, and probably the most used common agent first line for now 10 years or more, could cabozentinib become the next, you know, first line option? I think this is a serious consideration and um, certainly kudos to the alliance and its leadership and to the NCI in sponsoring these important, you know, uh, study that takes an active and a reasonable control arm. So a lot to be seen. I think we're going to see, um, you know, uh, more follow-up. But, uh, you know, it is very possible that this study will change how we treat frontline renal cell cancer.